Hey, Troy again here. Um, you know, I enjoy both new pens and old ones. I know there are people who are collectors out there who really like the new stuff. I know there's folks out there who like vintage pens and enjoy restoring them. I kind of dabble in both. You know, I, I don't really have a preference one for the other. I'm kind of getting towards a preference for newer ones, though, just because of some of the results I have at times. Um, I want to share with you my newest purchase today. Um, I got this one in the mail just today. It's a gorgeous brown marble looking or wood grain uh, looking pen. This is a wherever pen. I only own one other wherever and it's this one here. This is a wherever Supreme. It's a lever filled lever action pen um, and so I don't know if it was just never used new old stock from the 1950s or 60s and I ordered this one. I got this for ten dollars uh, from uh, the Pen Hero store based out of Raleigh and I'm not too far from Raleigh easy driving distance I used to live in Raleigh and uh, so I got this one I, I gotta be honest with you didn't like it though you know uh, I've had this one for several months and it, it's not a bad looking green sea foam kind of a pretty pen the section seems to be really stubborn to get out of this so I don't know if it had been kind of uh, cemented in place or what and the nib and feed on this uh, are not coming out anytime soon and it's got a little twist up uh, or a little the nib kind of goes whoop, up just a hair on this and what I didn't like about it was when you put it back together if you can probably see there's a gap here on the threads so it doesn't thread all the way so it makes me wonder if the 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 nib was in far enough on this so that's why I was kind of concerned with it um, and it didn't write all that well has wasn't really impressed with it uh, so it's one of those where, all right, I've just flushed it out and I put it in my drawer and I'm leaving it there. Well, you know, I was coursing through eBay and I found this one here. Uh, this one was from a seller in Beaufort, North Carolina. Yes, in North Carolina, it's Beaufort. South Carolina, it's Beaufort. Don't get the two confused because you'll offend people in either town. But uh, Beaufort's a real pretty town at the coast of North Carolina been there many many times but so I ordered this one it was only five dollars and fifty cents on eBay so I took the chance uh, and I was the high bidder on it I said that's a pretty pen now there's some things about this number one it's a lot shorter than I thought it would be the next the but one of the first things I recognized is I was looking at the the listing and I didn't see a lever I was only used to a wherever pen having a lever and there was no information. As a matter of fact, I'll pop up the picture of the listing. And throughout the listing, there's no indication whatsoever as to the model. I tried doing some research online, and I was not able to find anything on the model of this particular pen. Um, I'm assuming with this, it may have been a button filler. Okay, I don't know if you can see that. It looks like it may be a, a, a button. And I've never had a button filler before on a vintage pen. Um, but I figured for $5.50, I'll check it out. All it says here on the barrel is wherever. <laughs> you know, um, and, it, and then it was made in New Jersey. That's all the information that I've got on this pen. But uh, you pull it out, and here's what it looks like. Um, now, when I first got this pen today, in today's mail, um, it's a nice little celluloid looking at it, and it's a little shorter than I thought it was. So when I, when I took, it up, took it out, and I held on to it. I was like, yeah, that's really short in my hand. Definitely going to have to post it. It posts okay. All right, good. Now that feels okay. I can deal with that. And it's light. It's balanced. Not a problem. Knowing that it was probably going to need um, a new sack or some kind of repair to it, I figured I was going to have to dig into it some. Well, the section came out pretty easily on this thing, and I found all kinds of crusted uh, rubber and dried up ink on the inside. I was able to get all that out, and during the course of it, you know, this looks like a tension bar came out. It was in crappy condition, and this thing fell out, which I'm assuming um, is part of the, the button filler mechanism uh, where there would be a diaphragm of some sort, I guess. Um, I don't know. So, I don't have the materials to fix all that, and I don't know how. So, for right now, what I did was I can just converted it into um, a sack filler, and I'm going to have to do it without a lever for right now, because I just wanted to play with it. Now, now I'm not going to, I may or may not eventually track down all the materials that I need for it, but, so what I did was I made sure there was some silicone grease on this thing to be able to get it apart, 
and you can see that you know I, I, all I did was I just threw a sack on it, and there was nothing on the inside except like I said dirt or, or um, ink crud. So <laughs> um, I had to you got to squeeze the bulb, and it took a little bit to get it primed. Uh, but so what it took was me cleaning all that stuff out, throwing it in my ultrasonic cleaner, and running it through like 1600 cycles. No, okay, um, three or four actually on the uh, the section. And uh, I was uh, after running it through uh, several cycles uh, using some um, some pen flush in my ultrasonic cleaner, I could get the nib and the feed out before they weren't coming out. But after running it through, you know, a lot of ink came out, a lot of dirt came out. Uh, so I was able to get that fairly clean. The barrel was full of crud and the the dirty water. Um, after the ultrasonic cleaning, uh, it was like, wow, look at all that crud that it got out. A lot of ink that was caked and dried in there. And then even the cap. I took the cap and I started cleaning it out. And was, wow, Q-tip after Q-tip was getting filthy and dirty. So I took the long uh, one uh, swabs with the, the wooden, uh, the longer ones. And, you know, that kept getting dirty. All right, fine. Go through it through the, uh, the ultrasonic cleaner. So uh, finally cleaned that up and uh, polish it up with a, a jeweler's cloth a little bit. This little band here actually moves, um, and I wasn't uh, too thrilled about that, but it's an old pen for which I paid $5.50. So I cleaned up everything the best I could, and it actually looks pretty well, pretty good. So I wanted to see how well does it write. So, scratchy. <laughs> uh, the tines looked aligned, uh, but it looked like there may have been some more tipping on one of the tines and the other. Um, and it wrote very scratchy. So um, I took some micro mesh and I sat and I did my little figure eights and my swirls and up, down, left, right. And then finally it started to write fairly smoothly. And I started with a little uh, grittier uh, paper than a lot of folks do. But um, it got to writing and it actually now writes very acceptably smooth. Um, you know, I, it took a while to, to, to prime it with that uh, little sack bulb, and I used my last sack that I had. Um, fortunately, I've got some on order, and I'll be picking some up uh, at the DC Pen Show. But um, the other thing that was frustrating, not only can I not find what model it is, so I wouldn't even know where to start to, in getting parts for this to actually make it work the way it should, um, just looking uh, for wherever pen sacks all the, the guides that I've seen for pen sacks are not including wherever. <laughs> uh, so that was interesting. Uh, so I made an ink sack fit that probably was a little too small. It probably took like at least a number 16. I think I only had a number 14 left. And that was the last ink sack that I had in the house. So anyway, but it actually writes fairly well. I used uh, some Waterman ink. My Waterman Serenity Blue that I always like to test with vintage pens and our, our Waterman inks are highly recommended by different restorers that I've seen uh, because of their ink properties. So on the vintage pen I figured I'd give it a try. And you know, here's how it wrote. You know, wherever pens, not overly impressed with either one of them that I've gotten for vintage pens. Um, don't know as though I'll ever seek to get another one. Let me give you a little comparison of the length of these. I'm assuming that there was something else that went on here. I've seen button fillers that extend out like this on eBay. So I'll put the caps up. And you can see that there is a significant difference in length. Um, and very different shaped barrels. Very different shaped caps. You know, as well as clips. So. I don't even know what era this is since I can't track down the model. I've looked at uh, people who restore pens for a living on their, their like Richard Bender site, and I can't track down any information on this. Um, I don't know if wherever was just a cheap brand that a lot of people didn't bother uh, getting restored. I'm not all that familiar with them, and I haven't been able to find. Now, I've got behind me, uh, I've got several books uh, that have just come in. I had one on vintage pens. I got two more in today. I've got two or three more still on the way. So I can do a little more research offline. Anyway, such is my journey through uh, vintage pendum. So, uh, but you know, I, I may or may not buy some more. I don't know. Uh, I'm always up for learning. I'm always up for a challenge. And it is frustrating when I can't get the research done that I'm looking for, uh, but I won't quit. It gives me something to do and keeps my mind occupied. Hey, thanks for watching. I uh, appreciate it. Just uh, just another video on some, some things I found. By the way, if you know what kind of pen this is, 
please comment. Please let me know if you know any details about these and if you know any source of parts for uh, supplies to try to fix them. I welcome any feedback uh, and information on that. So, all right. Ciao, Bella. Thanks. Bye.